4 on the Lackawanna cutoff, where we'll be talking about the Pequest Fill. At the time, it was constructed the largest railroad fill in the world. Hi, I'm Chuck Walsh, and I'm president of the North Jersey Rail Commuter Association. And today, we're going to talk about railroad fills, specifically the Pequest Fill. Now, where we are is physically located immediately just west of the Andover Station stop. In fact, right over here is where it will be, right at the edge of the Pequest Fill. And in fact, the track, I think, of the siding will actually uh, will proceed even beyond where we are now, uh, which is literally on the Pequest Fill. The Pequest Fill begins right over here. Now, Pequest Fill is a little over three miles long. And as I said, the largest railroad fill at the time when it was constructed, uh, going as high as 110 feet above the Pequest River, uh, for which that valley is named, as a matter of fact, the valley which the Pequest uh, fill crosses, uh, the, it, it contains approximately 7 million cubic feet of fill material, which is almost half of the entire 15 million cubic feet of, or cubic yards, I should say, of, of fill that is, was used on the entire cutoff. Now, what's a cubic yard? Well, a cubic yard is literally a, an amount filling uh, a space of three feet, or yard, by three feet by three feet. And imagine seven million of those, and that's what is contained in this entire fill. Now, the Pequest fill was constructed by two different means. One was by bringing fill material from another location, which I'll talk about in a second, and using small dump cars out on to wooden trestles. In other words, literally the, the, the train would back uh, dump cars out onto this trestle and the, the fill would dump out onto the area below and they'd just continue to do that train after train would, and until you built up the fill to the level that you needed it to be at. The other method was to construct large uh, cable towers that were uh, distant from one another and to string cable between there with track attached and basically do the same thing, back the train out onto the, this, I'll call it mini trains, they weren't full-size trains, out onto the, uh, the cable uh, uh, attached, uh, you know, in that, in mid-air, and to dump the fill that way and then build the fill um, in, in that uh, means. Now, what is fill? Uh, fill is basically anything that you can use to build an embankment. Uh, it can be rock. Um, in fact, if you look in some places on the cutoff, there are boulders you can see off to the side. Uh, it can be small rock, can be gravel, can be a dirt type of material. How did they uh, have the Lackawanna obtain this fill is a question. Well, a couple ways they did that. Now, if we look in this direction, we are looking at, actually, we are physically on what was section three of the cutoff for construction. There were seven sections. Uh, the Fequest fill was built by, uh, well, half of it was built by uh, the David Flickweir, David W. Flickweir Construction Company. That was section three. And then section four, the, the western half, the western mile and a half of the Pequest fill, was built by the Walter Gahagan Construction Company. Now, what they had to do was to get fill. That's what you do. You need fill. It wasn't here to begin with because that's, uh, it was a valley. <clears throat> so what was done is, uh, east of here, there is a cut. A cut is basically a place where the railroad goes through the surrounding terrain. If it be rock, you have to blast with using dynamite or dig it out, depending on um, the consistency of the material you're going through. And in fact, what they would do is they would drag the fill material from the cut and bring it out here onto the Pequest fill in order to build the fill. And they 
actually went even as far, I believe, from here to Roseville Tunnel, uh, which was, 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 wasn't originally intended to be a tunnel. In a future episode, we'll talk about Roseville Tunnel. But essentially, they, they used as much fill as they could to drag from one place to another and, and then use it for the fill. The problem they had with the Pequest fill is there wasn't enough fill to go around. So the Lackawanna had to purchase 760 acres of farmland out in this area adjacent to the Peak West Phil and uh, dug out to, I believe, is a level of maybe in some places 10 or 12 feet deep, uh, what they call borrow pits. And then that material was brought from there, wherever that was, whatever farm in the area, and then loaded up and then put onto the uh, Peak West Phil. And that was the process they used. This particular section, <clears throat> section three, was problematic in that they ran late um, in terms, in fact, they even held up the, the, what was supposed to have been a, uh, the, the, the deadline of uh, August of 1911. They started in August of 1908. The projected end date was August of 1911, but they, they fell behind on this section here, the eastern part of the Peak West Ville, Flickware, <clears throat> the fl what became the Flickware and Bush section, because Lincoln Bush also joined in uh, with uh, Mr. Flickware. And uh, President Truesdale actually paid a visit here, I believe it was in May or June of 1911, to uh, try to rally the troops and to, to really put pressure on the uh, construction contractors to get moving, or you know, move even faster, as a matter of fact. And at some point, they were actually working 24-7 and were working by torchlight on this section just to keep going during the summer of 1911 to try to finish. And they eventually did finish, and the, the railroad opened on Christmas Eve 1911. But uh, there was a lot of pressure to really uh, keep moving on and getting this uh, project going and, and completed, of course. So here we are at the eastern, most eastern part of the Pequest Phil. We're now going to move a little bit further west. Here we are in Andover on the Sussex branch of the Lackawanna Railroad. The Sussex branch was here well before the cutoff was. As you can see, the Sussex branch passes underneath the cutoff. This is actually a fairly large fill for the Sussex branch itself. And then on top of that is another fill, the Pequest fill, for the Lackawanna cutoff. Now, as we were talking before about fill material, you can look over here towards Route 206, which passes, to use my terminology, a stone's throw away. There are large rocks, boulders, many of them are, I think it would be pretty safe to call them that, that constitute the fill that were dumped here when this fill was constructed. Looking into the tunnel, you can see that there's only room for one track, even though the tunnel opening was originally maybe intended for two tracks, but the Lackawanna must have been realistic and realized that it didn't need to do that extra work to take away the rock on the right-hand side here to clear for a second track that would never probably be needed. This is common construction. You'd see this if you look at 206, uh, the the same type of opening, maybe a little bit wider, and in, in other uh, under road crossings, uh, this kind of construction was used as well. Now, the Sussex branch was or would be the only place that the town of Andover would ever get a station. There was actually a promise to possibly give the town of Andover a station on the on the cutoff. That never occurred as it turned out. But there was a promise to upgrade to build a new station for Andover, not, not very far down the track in this direction, maybe not even a half a mile from where we're standing right here. Uh, but that that particular promise was never fulfilled and the old station, which dated back into the 1800s, was retained and never was upgraded. So, our next stop 
which will be much further west on the Peak Westville, uh, is going to be where we're going to visit a schoolhouse, which has a bit of a story attached to it with the Lackawanna Cutoff. Here we are in Huntsville, New Jersey. Behind me is the Peak Westville. This is a spot that is very interesting because there used to be a schoolhouse right here literally right here where that fill is now in fact it may still be down there someplace buried within the fill when the cutoff was being built i spoke to a gentleman in 1990 his name was walter smith uh, he was living in newton new jersey at the time but he grew up here in Huntsville and went to the Huntsville school, which would have been a, a school for presumably all grades, at least at the elementary level. And he told the story that when he was, he would have been maybe eight or nine at the time, was in this schoolhouse when they were building the cutoff. This would probably be about 1908 or 1909, one of those years. And as the cut, as the fill was being built closer and closer to the schoolhouse, they knew that it was going to be replaced. And the Lackawanna had offered already to rebuild it at another location, which we'll show you in a moment. But during the period of time before the new schoolhouse was opened, the old one was still in operation while the the rocks and the boulders were tumbling down and he told the story that he remembers several times that the wooden schoolhouse he was in would get whammed by a rock falling down that was being dropped off one of the uh, the cable cars I was describing uh, in the previous part of this uh, video. Now the, the deal was that the, because the schoolhouse was on the right-of-way or literally under the right-of-way in this particular case uh, for the Peak Westville that a new schoolhouse will be built and in fact one was built and let's pan around and we'll take a look at it it's now a private home but and only served as a schoolhouse between 1908 and 1922 when it became a, a private residence uh, but we were talking to one of the neighbors in the neighborhood and uh, they said it's a very nice house inside and it's been taken care of very nicely but it in fact is the old schoolhouse uh, for Huntsville. So we're going to make just one more stop and we'll try to get as close to the western end of the Peak Huntsville as we can before the sun goes down which is uh, happening very quickly. Here we are in late December that happens that time of year. And, uh, and, and then we'll close it out for the, our segment on the Peak West Fill. Here we are on Peak West Road at the very western end of the Peak West Fill. Look up in that direction, that's, this is where the, the fill ends. And barely visible is a signal box, which was the end of the Greendale siding. Greendale is now a mile or two to our west at this point, and we'll talk about that in a future video as well. Uh, but this is it. This is uh, we're right now about three miles from Andover, where we started. This is and in between here and Andover uh, would be about seven million cubic yards of fill material. Uh, right here, it looks like more of a combination of dirt rather than rockers that we saw much further east here and we're not too far from where the Pequest River is which is the from whence the name of the Pequest fill came from if you pan around there is another borrow pit over here you can see that's where some of the fill came from so this is the Pequest fill and uh, certainly thank you for joining us for this part four and look forward to part five on the Lackawanna Cutoff.